This week, I dedicated an entire hour to my Good Neighbor campaign. There's a reason this campaign is important to me. It's not just about talking to strangers or being polite. It's about showing up when your community needs you most. That's something my next guests fully appreciate. A few weeks ago, they experienced every parent's worst nightmare when their six-year-old son disappeared along with his best friend, his dog Remington. But this story has a happy ending thanks to an army of good neighbors. Here to share it, our parents, Dan and Sherry, along with good neighbor Steve, just one of the many volunteers that day. How did your son go missing? It happened after school. Uh, he was getting off the bus, and he's the youngest of our three children. He's the most outgoing. Uh, and we live in rural Minnesota. Out in the, we have 20 acres, and we're surrounded by woods and corn. So it's real easy to get lost. Yeah. Um, so they came into the house, and Remington went outside, and Ethan just followed him. And then he just kept walking. So when the boys found out that he was missing, then they called me right away. And then I called Dan, and we raced home. Uh, oh. As soon as she called me, I uh, got home. Uh, and as soon as I pulled in the driveway, I could see her older two boys. And they were just pale white. And so I knew something was wrong. So I grabbed them. We went through the house. We went through our outbuildings and things like that. And as soon as I did that, I knew for sure I had to call 911. Did that uh, and started searching some more. The police showed up. They started to get a command center set up. and. And uh, it was amazing to see the support immediately on how many people started to show up. So many strangers got involved, not just first responders. This is the thing I love about this story. Just tons of normal people just finding out that your son is lost and wanting to help, right? Oh, it was incredible, the number of people. Uh, the sheriff's office put it on Twitter and on Facebook, and thousands of people heard. They started coming and coming. They had a wow. command center in our yard. People started parking on the highway out in our driveway and on the highway. I was in the they, woods searching, and when I came out, uh, I started walking down the driveway, and the first thing I could see was hundreds of people um, at a staging area waiting to get on buses. And the uh, Becker School District, they allowed numerous buses, and people donated their time driving people all over. What an amazing community. And there was cars lined up on the street as far as you could see both ways. And, and uh, when I saw that, I just kind of stopped, and my cousin that was with me just kind of put his arm on my, uh, or his arm on my shoulder, and, yeah. and uh, I just kind of looked at him, and I just kind of go, I, I don't know what to do or say. Ooh, I can't imagine. Ian, I mean, you're a little, you're a little one. What would you do? Well, my grandma lives in Georgia, and, you know, she has nowhere near 20 acres, but um, she does have some woods in her backyard, and I love riding my bike, and her dogs, you know, will follow me a lot. But who's out there? I, I really don't know. My dog, Coco, um, he recently passed away, unfortunately, but he, I trusted him with my life, yeah, so I would have mm -hmm. clung by the dog. Yeah, mm -hmm. I love that about dogs. Mm -hmm. I love my dogs. So, Steve, how did you find out Ethan was missing? Uh, about 7.30 that night, as mentioned, uh, I saw it on Twitter that yeah. the sheriff had put out a call for help. There was a missing child, and if anybody could come help. I have a, a drone business, and part of what I do is uh, thermal inspection. So I have a thermal camera on a drone inspecting buildings, other structures. I just immediately packed up all my gear and drove over. I, you know, I never met him. We, I didn't know him, but I just, there's a missing child. I have a tool that can help. I, I got to go. You're it's, a great it's, dude. It's, it's, You're such a great man. Steve, you captured the moment he was found on infrared. Let's take a look at that and tell us what's going on. So the field is, is light, and then the darker spots are the people. The long, skinny one is Remington, and you can see how excited he was running around there on the, the left. And they're kind of making a path. There's an irrigation path, which is the easiest place to walk. You can start to see some of the other rescuers that were in the area. And, there, and this is muddy heavy corn, they're pushing through the corn stalks. Uh, you know, it's tough going to anywhere, moving through this area. And scary at nighttime, like even, low I mean. Low 30s, or yeah. I should say low 40s, upper 30s. I mean, and for a kid, really... heck, I'm 37, I don't want that. <laughs> I don't want to be in a cornfield. I've seen scary movies. I don't be in a <laughs> cornfield at night, stuck out there by myself. Yeah. No. Um, so Dan, you must have been so relieved though, because um, word traveled fast, right, that they found? Yes, I was in a complete different, uh, different area searching, and uh, as I was going along, all of a sudden I heard 
just a person scream something and I stopped and it was the longest oh. seconds of my life because I wasn't sure if he was alive, dead, yeah. um, anything. Oh, and uh, I knew the scream came from that direction and so I just took off running and uh, all of a sudden I could start to hear other people cheering and uh, it would started here and then it was over here and then here and behind you and you could hear it, you could hear it for miles and it was like being at a stadium or something you know if somebody scores a touchdown or something mm -hmm. there's the, I mean, the crowd erupts and people it's, finding it's, it's it yeah I don't know how to explain that's the it. sound it of the best side of humanity yes it's the yeah. sound of really good humans so Steve, you got the rescue on camera, but you took another dramatic picture that night. Explain, explain the picture. So when I put the drone up initially with a, a regular camera, it's just pure dark, except for maybe a few little flashes of flashlights going through the cornfield. You can't mm -hmm. see anything. But then when I switched over to thermal, uh, this image appeared, which I, I, you know, I just found so moving. That's a beautiful picture. Thank what you. a what an amazing way technology can help us, like find the ones we love, find the animals we love. Like your your job is amazing, what you do. Thank you for doing it. We just heard from Steve, one of the complete strangers who helped find Ethan. Uh, but Sherry and Dan, there were countless others though who made a difference, right, in this search. Yes, uh, when I came out of the woods and started, you know, going out to the uh, staging points and things like that, there was numerous teachers from the schools, uh, yeah. superintendents, principals, all those different types of people like that that gave up their night to, to search for this little boy. And I had a cousin that once he found out, he drove for over three hours just to try to get here to help. And, oh. and uh, some friends that came into the house that uh, were there for Sherry. And Alan, who was uh, um, a person that I've known pretty much my entire life, that uh, he was going through the thickest underbrush and mud and all this kind of stuff. And the worst thing is that he has cancer and he's going through radiation and all this other types of things. But he gave up his night to come and look. It didn't matter how sick he was. Okay. And then wow. Betty. <laughs> yep. Okay. And then another woman was Betty. She just had knee surgery and her doctor <laughs> sold her to be taking it easy and stay off of it. And she said, we just have to go out. It's like searching for your grandson. <laughs> Okay. Oh <laughs> Everything's fine. Um, these are the nicest people. I'm going to move to your town. Um, you have the nicest neighbors. Um, so to strangers who got involved were the volunteers who actually found Ethan. Jared and Jesse are here with us in the audience, y'all. So, so how did y'all get involved in the search? How did you hear about it? So I was actually sitting at home on Facebook and I saw the story that Ethan was missing come across my newsfeed. I'm a father myself. Mm. I have a seven-year-old, Jordan, and for me, it hit home really hard. Of course. Um, at, at that point, I just decided that, you know, I need to do something. I need to help. So that's right when I called my buddy Jesse um, to see if he could come as well. Uh, when I got the phone call from Jared, I hadn't heard anything about this at this point. Mm -hmm. So when he told me, I was floored. I also have a 12-year-old son, Owen. Right then and there, we're both hunters. We packed up our hunting equipment. We were ready to go until 6 a.m. or until they were going to kick us out of the field. And we headed out there, out to the field, where when we were walking through the field. Yep, that's when we got about halfway through the field. The line stopped. At that moment... Um, the wind had died down. It had been windy all night and raining off and on. The line, the wind died down. Did you say That's raining off and on. Yeah, it was drizzling that oh. night too. So it was cold and wet. But when the wind died, that for that split second, I heard a dog whining. So we kind of knew a general direction of where that was coming from. I mean, as you can imagine, he's a little bit quicker than I am. <laughs> so at that point, I took off through the cornfield and I was beelining it until I saw this little boy, and my heart just fell out of me. Yeah. And he looked up at me with these big eyes and a smile on his face, and he just looked right at me and said, you saved me. I picked him up. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's got to be, especially being a daddy, that's yeah, got to be. Yeah, it's something that words can't express. I picked yeah. the little boy up, and it's the closest thing to pure joy that I've ever had. Yeah. So when you finally got, I'm trying to clean up, y'all. <laughs> I'm like, clean up on aisle six. Uh, it's, uh, so when you finally got to Ethan, like, was that just like, did all the emotions come out? Because I would, that's what would happen with me. 
Like They were driving yeah. us there, and uh, I didn't even wait for the car to stop. I jumped out of the vehicle. I left Sherry and the other two boys in the car, and I sprinted to the ambulance, and, yeah. and uh, the door was open. Wow. I jump inside, and he's cuddled up in a little blanket, and he's got this big grin on his face. And so I look at him, and I'm like, buddy, what happened? And he goes, oh, Dad, I got lost in the woods. <laughs> Yeah. You think? I'm like, yeah, buddy. And then he just he instantly smiled again. And then he, there was two ladies in the ambulance, and he looks at both of them, and he goes, "I'm good now." Oh my, oh my god! Well, I'm busy hugging the firefighters and crying, and we're all hugging. Yes. And, yeah. What a beautiful ending. That could have, you know, what I'm saying, it could have gone any number of ways. Well, we've been talking about them the whole time. I think it's time uh -huh. to finally meet them. Ethan and Remington, come on out here. Hello! Hi! Do you give hugs? Hi! You're so adorable. You want to sit by your mama? Look how cute you look. I want this outfit for my son, which, by the way, my, my youngest son's name is Remington. <laughs> Funny enough. Do you want to say anything, though, to Jared and Jesse, Ethan? You want to say anything to them? He's like, no, I'm good. I'm shy. I'm shy. What could you I'm say? sure you already said it when they found you. Did you say thank you? Did you say thank, thank you. you? Yeah. Oh, my gosh, you are so cute. Are you going to go hug him? That's why I saw you. Oh, my God. He is adorable. Oh, my God. Oh, my gosh, I love it. You are such a cool dude. I'm so happy you had Remington there with you. That's good. You need to, I always, I believe in a buddy system in life. <laughs> I will not stop talking until you subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's right, and I can talk a lot. Seriously, not gonna stop. Yep, still here, not going anywhere. I see you. Don't walk away from this.